Um, which brings me to the other thing. Uh, that's a reference to the zombie, um, zombie regulations that Amy already touched on. The specific policy implications for green businesses are absolutely huge uh, because so much of the environmental agenda, for better or worse, is driven by policy. Um, this is in no way an exhaustive list, but currently we have absolutely no idea what is going to happen to the Emissions Trading Scheme, the Ethan Products Directive, the Circular Economy Package, the Energy Union, the Habitats Directive, the Air Quality Rules, the Renewables Targets, REACH, WE, which is the amusingly named Waste, Electronic and Electrical Equipment Directive. Um, I think our various experts could probably treble that list. Those are all, they, they sound boring, and indeed, believe me, I've been writing about them for 10 years, they are staggeringly boring. They are also very, very important and impact industries that are worth billions of dollars and tens of hundreds of thousands of jobs to this country. Um, they were all introduced for good, solid environmental reasons. Um, we don't know what's going to happen to them. Every attempt so far to get clear indications from ministers as to what's going to happen to them has been met with a pretty fair indication that the government has not clear what happens to them either. Um, they're either playing the best broker dope strategy since Muhammad Ali, or they genuinely don't have anything clue what's going on. Um, I'm leaning towards the latter, sadly. Um, the argument is that the Great Repeal Bill will deliver stability and will we'll keep a lot of these policies, but then we deal with this issue that's already been touched on, I won't go into, that we have all the policies, but we don't have any mechanisms for enforcing them. DEFRA has been cut by over 37% since 2010. Uh, 2010. Uh, there isn't the ideological desire to ramp up those civil service agencies to police this stuff. Uh, so you are going to end up with, with, with these zombie regulations. Um, and again, if you look at that from a business perspective, if you're the owner of a business, what do you do? Do you comply with the law, do the right thing, knowing full well that it's never going to get enforced? Or do you not comply with the law on the very, very small chance you might get caught out, but you're watching your competitors not comply with the law? So what, what do you do? It becomes a very difficult moral choice, a very difficult financial choice as a business as to what you do, because the government isn't enforcing the level playing field that's needed on so many of these things. Um, now, the Green Brexiteers, the two of them, um, who said that it was a good idea to leave the EU, their argument would be, it doesn't matter, we're, we're a sovereign nation, we can get our own brilliant new environmental policies, why can't we police our own air, our own air quality, why can't we police our own crops? Um, to which I would reply, great, I really, really hope we do. Um, however, they are massively underestimating the political pressure they'll be under. Um, and the economic pressure that will be under to water down a lot of this stuff. And just by way of indication, uh, I'd just like to draw your attention to last August there was a column in The, the Sun by Eurosceptic MP Bill Cash. And at the bottom of the column, um, it's quite easy to mock The Sun, so um, I'm going to. Um, they had ten other ways to say up yours to EU. Now you, you see what they've done there, EU, you, and saying up yours to EU, very fair. Um, here they are, in full. One, the sun is calling for the return of blue brick passports ditched for EU-backed burgundy. Uh, yep, that's, that's the main one. Let's, uh, let's get rid of the passports. Uh, two, restore our once proud fishing industry scrapping tough EU quotas. Three, axe EU-imposed VAT on gas and electric for cheaper energy bills. Four, have cleaner carpets by swapping weak EU-regulated vacuums for powerful ones. Has anyone, anyone noticed this, how Brussels is destroying your carpets by their weak ones? Um, have drier hair by avoiding planned EU energy rules on powerful hair dryers. Again, next time you wake up in the morning and your hair's not quite right, it's Brussels' fault. Uh, defend our morning tea and toast by using appliances free of energy constraints. See the light by bringing back the incandescent bulb phased out by EU regs. Uh, my personal favourite, reclaim jam. As the EU says less than 60% sugar means it's a fruit spread. Uh, nine, recycle tea bags, which are council banned amid EU fears over spreading disease. And ten, reclaim the countryside from turbines and solar panels built to meet EU targets. Um, now, 
it's obviously ridiculous, but you've probably noticed seven of those 10 are basically allowing more damage to the environment than undermining green businesses and the green economy. Uh, the vast majority of them are about basically ensuring that we use more energy, waste more energy with craft products. That's what they're campaigning for. Um, one of them's about passports, uh, and one of them's about jam, and then one of them is bizarrely about recycling tea bags. But the rest of them are basically mechanisms for pushing up emissions, pushing up environmental impacts, uh, imposing less green products on British citizens. Um, don't <coughs> underestimate the threat to environmental policy from that kind of thinking. It's not going away. It's only going to get worse. Um, and that's the sad tragedy of it. I think we're in a, we're in a fist fight. <coughs> for the retention of all the environmental progress that has been made over the last two decades, and that's the sad truth of it. Um, which brings me to the last piece, uh, the, the very ugly. Um, and this, for me, this is the real tragedy of Brexit for the green economy and green businesses and indeed the, the whole piece. Um, we're actually in a really strong position in the UK green economy. It's made some incredible progress. <coughs> Uh, since 1990, carbon emissions, 90, I mean 1990, how many who's born before 1990 here? See, there's a whole swathe of the room, you know what I mean? There's a whole swathe of the room that wasn't even born there. But it, it's, it's actually a relatively short period of time. Carbon emissions are down 38% uh, in the UK, while the economy's grown 64%. There's been a complete decoupling of economic growth and carbon emissions. By 2020, 61% of our energy will be clean, uh, zero emissions. Uh, power station emissions are down 35 percent since 2010 alone. There has been this huge revolution going on in clean technology, and, and the transition that, that we've been making on the choir uh, is absolutely staggering. Um, which brings me to the real tragedy of Brexit. It's it's the opportunity cost. Um, when I was at school, my economics teacher, uh, Mr. Wallace, had a, had a nice way of explaining um, opportunity cost. He basically confiscate the chocolate bar that anyone brought into office into the room and say how much did this cost? And you'd, you'd say 30p, because that's what it cost back then. And, uh, sadly not anymore. And, and then you say, no, that's not. It didn't, it didn't cost that. The, the Mars bar cost the Twix that you could have bought. And that's the piece of Brexit. The Brexit project cost is the things we could have been doing. The focus, the policy, the political pressure that could have been brought to bear on building the sustainable green economy that we so desperately need. Um, there is an argument that we need a Brexit to get there, that we need to tear it all up so that we can build it again and make it better. That there's this Maoist tendency from Michael Gove and others that creative destruction was the way to go here. I mean, that's a pretty high risk game to play, isn't it? People's livelihoods and indeed the, the credibility of a, a viable climate friendly civilization. Um, so there's been these huge gains, and that's the worry is that this, this distraction will come from this. In complicated project that we are about to embark upon and we will lose sight of things like this uh, which are some of the most beautiful and inspiring pieces of engineering you will ever see and are transforming the way we live and do give us the course for optimism that I think was asked about earlier um, so yeah please try to stay optimistic but also recognize uh, there is a massive massive ideological political and economic fight on the way and uh, we do need to mobilize to defend what